Okay. Has everyone got this bit in their booklet ready to go? So this is still the same theme of things that we've been doing in the previous lesson, but it's just got now some more interpretation that goes with this, okay? Um, we'll do one question and you'll do a bit of practice and there's an exam question that goes alongside this one as well. So we've got the line L has equation R equals minus two, one, four, plus lambda one, minus two, one. And the point P has position vector two, one, three. Show that P does not lie on L. Um, first of all, can we just remind ourselves, um, what do these two things mean here? To mean, what does uh, either one of these two bits, the tell me about... Yep. The and the second one is the direction, the line from it. Okay, good. And sometimes what do we do with this, this whole thing? How, what do we sometimes do with this? Expand. We sometimes expand it and kind of write it as a single thing. So if we want to show that P does not lie on L, um, first of all, if I put L together, I get minus 2 plus lambda... 1 minus 2 lambda and 4 plus lambda. That's the equation of the line. And actually, that's a general point on the line. It could be anywhere at all on the line, depending on what value I pick for the parameter, which is lambda in this case. So what do I need to do to show that P does not lie on L? Um, like there's not one value for lambda that would make them all true. Good. There is not a value for lambda that would make them all true. So. I can actually try and make them equal to each other. Because that's the weird thing. Sometimes in math, if we want to show that something isn't true, we pretend that it is true, and then show that something has gone uh, a bit wrong there. So we've got 2, 1, and 3. So what does it look like from the first bit that the value of lambda is? We've got 2 equals minus 2 plus lambda. This is for the i components. So you get lambda equals 4. But for the j component, you get 1 equals 1 minus 2 lambda. So there, lambda is equal to 0. So there is no value for lambda such that P lies on L. If you wanted to, you could try it with K as well. And you get 3 equals 4 plus lambda. So lambda equals minus 1. Anything that shows that lambda is inconsistent because you can't have a different value of lambda for the i, the j, and the k part. OK. So you probably could have done these questions. Um, probably could have done these before. But I like to uh, think about how this is something we could look at, how we could draw a sketch that might help us to do this. Um, now, obviously, we can't sketch in three dimensions. So I've talked about this before. We kind of like flatten the diagram so that we can put it on a piece of paper. And a sketch has got nothing to do with really things being in the right direction or the right coordinates. It's just there as like a visual tool to help us keep going. So, so far, we've got a line and we've got a point, and we know that P does not lie on the line. So all I'm going to do is a line and a point. That's it. That's my sketch so far. It says, given that a circle, centre P, intersects L at points A and B, and that A has position vector 0, minus 3, 6, find the position vector of B. So, I'm going to draw a circle, but we don't technically need a circle. We can think about this in a different kind of way, but I'm going to start off by drawing a circle, because I think that's going to... I don't want that to be orange in there, so I need to change. Okay, good. So, centre, P, there is a circle, and it's going to intersect the line in two places. So, that's what the diagram looks like, Okay. So given that a circle, centre P, intersects L at points A and B, and that A has position vector 0, minus 3, 6, find the position vector of B. Now, there are many ways we could approach this problem. Many, many, many ways. 
Pardon? We could find out the distance between P and A. And what do we know about this distance? Equal. So we could find out the distances between them, and we know that those two things are equal to each other. I am going to propose that we do this, but it's not going to be the best method. So, and that sounds kind of weird for me to do that as a teacher, but I'm going to propose that we do this a long way because it's still going to give you the right kind of answer. But then I'm going to say to you afterwards, I actually think there's a better way that we could do this. Okay? So we know that these two distances are equal to each other. Let's just remind ourselves P uh, is 2, 1, 3. It's quite useful to put as much information on the diagram as possible. So we're going to do our first method, which I'll do in blue, and then I'll do a different method in a different color. So we know that the distance AP is equal to the distance PB or BP. The distance AP is equal to the modulus of, what do you do with the two coordinates? You, yeah, you what? You subtract them, don't you? So you've got the 0 and a 2. So that's going to be just a 2 squared. A minus 3 and a 1, that will be a, a 4 squared. Remember, I'm not even bothered about their plus or minus. So I just want to find the difference between them. I've got 6 and 3, so it's going to be a 3 squared. Obviously, you could have taken that slower. You could have done AP is P minus A, so you could have done 2, this, and this, 2 minus 4 minus 3. But I was just being a bit quicker there, OK? And 2 squared plus 4 squared plus 3 squared is root 29. Now, we don't know what the coordinate of B is, but I do know that this distance over here is going to be root 29. So I can find out what the vector BP is. But do I know what the coordinates of B are? Could I name them? What could I name? I could name the coordinates. So I could do x, y, z. However, x, y, z could be here. It could be here. It could be here. Mine is here specifically. Could I try and be better with my naming of that coordinate? Good. I know it's on the line. So why would I call it x, y, z? I would instead call it minus 2 plus lambda, 1 minus 2 lambda, 4 plus Lambda, because this is, a very, this is a specific coordinate that is on the line. And my coordinate B is on the line. It's not floating around in space in x, y, z. It is on that line. And that's often the mistake that people make. So I'm pleased, although it's silly to say, I'm pleased you suggested x, y, z, because it means I get to tell you it's not good to use x, y, z unless it genuinely is anywhere at all. But it's not. It's on the line. So I'm going to now find out the distance P, B by doing either this one minus this one, or this one minus this one. Which one do you prefer to do, do you think? Do you prefer to do B minus P? I personally prefer to do B minus P, because it's just I don't have to worry about these lambda things. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to do um, B minus P. So I'm going to find out the vector PB by doing B minus P which is minus 2 plus lambda, 1 minus 2 lambda, and 4 plus lambda. Bear in mind, this is the long method. We can do a short method in a second. And I'm going to take away p, which is minus 2 minus 1 minus 3. So I get minus 4 plus lambda, minus 2 lambda, 1 plus lambda. And I know that the magnitude of this, which is just the distance PB, is equal to root 29, because they're radii of a circle, aren't they? So I'm going to do the magnitude of this, which is this one squared plus this one squared plus this one squared square rooted equals the square root of 29. So I'm actually just going to ignore the square roots. And I'm just going to do, uh, let's just put it underneath here. So I've got minus 4 plus lambda squared plus minus 2 lambda squared 
plus 1 plus lambda squared is equal to 29. Now, it's because I'm doing the magnitude of both of them like this, isn't it, that I haven't bothered writing the square roots. So I had it with the square roots. I don't really need the square roots there because I just know it's the magnitude of the bits inside. So this is going to require some expansion. Where's my page extender? There it is. So we get lambda squared minus 8 lambda plus 16 plus 4 lambda squared plus lambda squared plus 2 lambda plus 1. And I'm also going to subtract the 29 and make it equal 0 because it's a quadratic. Let's get this out of the way. So we've got how many lambdas is that? So we've got 6 lambda squared minus 6 lambda. And then I've got 17 minus 29 minus 12. So I've got lambda squared minus lambda minus 2. Good. We've got lambda equals 2 and lambda equals minus 1. So now we figure out which one's for B and which one's for A. So A is 0 minus 3, 6. So what does it look like lambda is for A? Have a look at this. You've got minus 2 plus lambda is 0. Good. So this one is for A. So when lambda equals minus 1, we get that the position vector of b is going to be minus 2 plus lambda 1 minus 2 times lambda and 4 plus lambda. So it's minus 3, 3, and 3. Is that right? I actually think I lied at the beginning. I don't think there is a quicker way. Sorry. <laughs> I, th I had something in my head that just doesn't make any sense at all. You can tell it's a Monday session one. I've not, I've not slept enough. It's quite long. I thought there was going to be a quicker way, and I'll tell you the way I thought it was going to be quicker. Have I definitely subbed these in right, yeah? Yeah. So we've said that A is uh, 2, lambda is 2, B, lambda is minus 1. I was thinking the shortcut was, I've, I've been imagining a different question. If they were going to ask us to now find out what the shortest distance was, which is from here to here, what do we think at this point here the value of lambda is? Zero point five. Can you just tell me how you got 0 0.5? It's the middle of these two things here, and we know that the shortest distance is when these things are perpendicular to each other. So I obviously have not taught that beginning bit by saying, oh, there's a shortcut method. I was imagining this. When we do this much later on, we look at um, shortest distances. So I had that problem still in my head from about six lessons in the future. Um, so if you wanted to find the shortest distance here and you knew the value of lambda here and here, you'd find out when lambda is a half. You could substitute it in. And then you could subtract it and, and do Pythagoras. In fact, you wouldn't even need to subtract it because we've already done that over here. We found out the shortest distance is this kind of thing. That's the distance between P and a general point. Although we said it's between P and B, it's just actually just between P and a general point because everything's in terms of lambda. So if you substituted lambda as a half in here, here, and here, and then Pythagorized it, you would get the shortest distance between the point P and the line. I don't think there's a shorter way of doing that. But it is good it gave us two answers, isn't it? It is good that it gave us 
lambda is 2 and lambda is minus 1 there so that we can see them. Now, I, I think this question, I think you'd struggle to do this question without a diagram. Um, some people don't draw a diagram and still get all the stuff right, but they are a very, very small minority of people. I just think it is easier to understand it when you can see it. And it also is it's quite interesting to see it in that way as well. So the questions I'd like you to have a go at are still from that same exercise. It's still a, it's a really big exercise. And I do want to do these on the whiteboards so that you can see diagrams that are being drawn here. We're going to do 14, 15, 16, and 17. It, maybe we'll get a couple of those done, and then we can do a couple of them to finish off at home as well, OK?